If you're shooting in Pro Raw Max on your iPhone and not editing your photos, you are leaving so much image quality and image potential on the table. In this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step -step exactly how I edit my Pro Raw Max images inside of Lightroom so you can start to bring out all the detail, color, and dynamic range that your phone is actually capturing. And if we haven't met yet, Hey, my name's Zach. I've been a travel photographer for the last eight years, and I like to think I make learning photography pretty easy. All right, let's get into Lightroom Mobile. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom Mobile, and we've got our photo ready to edit. This is the shot that we're gonna be taking from this to this. Cool, let's get started. So I find that iPhones overexpose the images like 99% of the time, unless you've preset your exposure to already underexpose the shot, and in this case, I didn't do that. So let's kick things off inside of the light tab and let's just drop the exposure just a touch. Nothing too crazy. I just wanna look at darkening the image overall to make it seem a little bit more true to life. Now, while we're inside of the light tab, I'm also gonna look at increasing our contrast a little bit, decreasing the highlights a touch and maybe decreasing the shadows just a little bit as well. The whole idea here is to bring back a lot of contrast and to make sure that the uh, exposure of our shot is perfect and I would say things are looking pretty good. So with that out of the way, let's now dive into the tone curve. I'm gonna be adding one dot right down here on this cross section of our tone curve as this is where the shadows are controlled and I'm simply just going to drop it a little bit, not too much. And then I'm also gonna to come to the bottom left-hand corner and increase the blacks ever so slightly. This is gonna give a little bit more contrast to our shot and also increase the blacks, which is gonna give a bit of a fade to all the darker parts in our shot. And overall, I think things are starting to look pretty good. They are our exposure adjustments out of the way. Let's now dive into color. So in here, we are greeted with our temperature and tint sliders, vibrance and saturation. For this shot, we're not gonna be changing the vibrance or the saturation sliders at all. We're gonna dive into the color mix tab for that. And looking at our tint and temperature sliders, let's just have a quick look at what Lightroom thinks our temperature should be. I would say we're pretty much already there. Maybe warming the shot up a touch, but not too much. Might be a little bit beneficial, but nothing too crazy. As I would say, the skin tones and the white parts of our image are already looking pretty accurate, so I don't wanna play around with this all too much. Okay, let's dive into our color mixer tab. The first color that I'm gonna to go to in pretty much every single iPhone photo that I edit is the yellows and we're just gonna desaturate them. In this shot here, maybe it's not the best example, but I find that iPhones love to capture yellows and it makes things just look a little bit dirty and a little bit unclean. So reducing the saturation of the yellows is always a really good place to start when it comes to the color mix tab inside of Lightroom for editing iPhone photos. The next thing I'm gonna do is make my way over to the orange tab. I'm just gonna increase the saturation a little bit to make Amanda in this shot just look a little bit more tanned. And then having a look at every other color in here, I would say there's very little to no greens in the shot, but we might just desaturate them for good measure. Same thing with the aquas. We're gonna desaturate them a touch. We do have an overall blue tone in our shot. So desaturating them a little bit, then also bringing the luminance down, which is gonna darken those blue tones, gives a nice look to our shot. It's very subtle, but all of these tiny little changes are gonna add up to a pretty good looking edit at the end. And of course, when we're editing iPhone raw images, we don't have all the flexibility that we would have if we were editing raw images from a camera. So just keep that in mind. Don't go crazy on these edits. You still wanna keep them somewhat light. Now, when it comes to purple and magenta, I see no purple or no magenta in this shot. So we are gonna hit done and be done with that. So that is now our color workflow out of the way. We are, however, going to go into color grading very quickly and just add a little bit of blue, a tiny amount of blue into the shadows. We're gonna reduce the saturation quite considerably there and we are going to be done things are looking super nice. The next tab I wanna open up is the effects tab. And what we're gonna do here is make our way over to the effects tab in the effects tab. And we will then drop the clarity a touch as it helps take off that over sharpened look sometimes you can get on iPhone photos. And we're also gonna do the same thing with the texture slider. Just like that, we have got our base edit out of the way. And now we get to move on to our masking workflow. If you've never opened up the masking tool before, you are missing out big time. This is where you get to select and edit 
any part of the shot and this is where this image is about to come alive. So what I'm gonna do is first create a linear gradient from the bottom of our image, draw it up, come over to light and then de or not desaturate. We're gonna reduce the exposure just like that. And then we're gonna add another mask, radial gradient over the entire shot. I'm then gonna use this weird looking button on the left right here and invert it. And now we're going to reduce the exposure again, just like that. I'm then going to create another radial gradient and we are going to kind of fill in the top here, reduce the exposure one more time. Things are looking pretty good. And then just for good measure, we can zoom out a little bit here. I'm gonna add another radial gradient and we're gonna de, not desaturate, why do I keep saying that? We are going to reduce the exposure on that side and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. This is gonna make our subject, Amanda, stand out from our shot way more and it's also gonna add a little bit more depth. Oh, I'm affecting contrast there. A little bit more depth to our shot, which is always good. So we're just gonna reduce the exposure there a little bit. I would say things are looking pretty nice. The last mask I wanna add, I'm gonna open up masking. I'm gonna to come to here, I'm gonna hit select background. This should select everything except for Amanda, which it's done very well here. And then all I'm gonna do is reduce the exposure a little bit. Not too crazy, otherwise the image starts to look really weird and fake, but I'm gonna reduce the exposure just a touch to about 0 0.2, there we go. Perfect, actually it's looking a little bit too overcooked. So let's open this back up and let's reduce this to minus 0 0.2. There you go, minus 0 0.04. Okay, cool. Things are looking really nice. Now that we've got our base edit and we have our masking workflow done, two more steps to do. One, I'm gonna go back over the settings I've already gone through and I can now see this image. I can see it for what it is and the kind of direction that I wanna take this edit. And now I get to ask myself, hmm, what else do I wanna change? The first thing I wanna change is I wanna come into the light tab. I'm gonna open up the tone curve and I'm just going to increase the midtones a little bit. Helps add a little bit more contrast to the shot and it also helps Amanda stand out. It also makes the brighter parts of our image just a little bit brighter, which I kind of killed off maybe a little bit too much, but I would say overall things are looking good. I also now wanna come in here to the color tab. I'm gonna reset this as things were looking a little bit too warm. And now let's come over to, no, not color mix, Gr uh, color grading, and we're gonna add just a touch more, a little bit more blue in to the shadows, and I would say now things are looking good. Really, really good. Last thing I wanna do, we're gonna open up the remove tool. We are gonna make sure generative AI is enabled just down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And then I'm gonna zoom in here where we have got um, some weird sign on this building. It's just big and red, it doesn't look great. I'm gonna select it and a lot of stuff around it as well to make sure Lightroom has the best chance of completely removing it. And now we get to wait for Lightroom to uh, go through and work its AI magic. And just like that, my goodness, this is good. We have removed that giant distraction from over there. And oh, one last distraction I see. Actually, if we zoom in here, there is a guy sitting on Amanda's shoulder. So let's make sure generative AI once again is enabled. Reduce the size of our brush. Come over here. Okay, make sure we've got a nice amount of padding. Once again, let Lightroom's AI wizards do their thing. My goodness, nailed it again. And just like that, I would say our edit is complete. And there we go, that wraps up my Lightroom Mobile Pro Raw Max editing workflow. This workflow is also gonna work on normal photos that your iPhone shoots as well. You're just gonna have a little bit less flexibility. So if you're not already, definitely look at turning Pro Raw Max on. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna continue learning about photography, photo editing, video and video editing, you can check this video out right here and I'll see you over there.